Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of biochemistry which we are doing from Satya Narayana. Today we are continuing protein metabolism and the topic to discuss is metabolism of individual amino acids. So we will be talking about uh, specific amino acids jinka metabolism aap ke liye samajhna yaad rakhna is extremely important for your examination purposes as well as also for understanding of other uh, subjects including pharmacology pathology uh, physiology so they will all be very much interlinked and interconnected ab tak hum jitni baat kar rahe the pichle videos mein protein metabolism ke we were talking about the generalized concepts now some specific stuff okay so in the preceding pages the general aspects were discussed a summary uh, is given somewhere so we have done the general aspects so transamination kaise hai protein ke general pathways so we have dealt with all those stuff and now the metabolism of individual amino acids with special emphasis on the specialized products is described next abhi hum kuch amino acids dekhenge for example the first one we are going to start is glycine inki na sirf ye ki aapko specific metabolic pathways pata hone chahiye but also what are the products which are produced or linked with these amino acids so for example glycine important stuff to remember about glycine are a few things that it is glycogenic glycine glycogenic which means it produces glucose and it is optically inert you know when the beam of light rays passes through glycine doesn't uh, rotate it to left or right side so no levodextro rotatory stuff it is optically inactive okay and it is also uh, important source of a lot of other things and very important things so for example if you see there is a good diagram here to tell you what are the products produced from the glycine so just have a look uh, obviously it can give rise to proteins because this is an amino acid it can also give a lot of very important stuff such as glucose oxalate which can feed into a lot of different cycles ammonia uh, one carbon pool which uh, is the pool which can be utilized for multiple stuff purines i mean remember purines pyrimidines important part of nucleic acids glutathione conjugation reactions and this is uh, very important for detoxification or a lot of things in your liver so liver ke andar bahut sari cheezon ki conjugation hoti hai bile acids ki bhi aur drugs ki bhi even jo drugs aap lete hain once they come in the liver they are detoxified unke sath koi aur product combine kiya jata hai so if there is a drug something combines with this drug and that something includes glycine glycine also produce heme glycine also produce creatine so such an important amino acid and this i would say is the highlight of today's video because if you remember this then you remember what to remember about glycine glycine ke links aapko batane chahiye kaun kaun se amino acids aur kaun kaun se pathways mein ye feed karta hai that's the most important bit okay now it is actively involved in synthesis of many specialized products some of them we just had a look uh, at and here are they repeated in the body besides its incorporation into the protein kyunki protein to banayega hi na ye amino acid hai to glycine will obviously agar aapko exam mein koi kaam glycine ka yaad nahi aa raha to kam se kam ye aap keh sakte hain ki it will make proteins and actually aapki body ka um, jo structural component hai jiska ek bahut important protein hai collagen us collagen ka ye integral part hai glycine so imagine how important it is so glycine is among the commonest amino acid found in the protein structure being small and non polar क्योंकि ये इसकी कोई पोलैरिटी नहीं है लाइट रेस पे इनएक्टिव है सो इट्स वेरी आई मीन इट्स अ नाइस कंपाउंड स्मॉल नाइस कंपाउंड टू फिट इन एवरीवेयर ग्लाइसिन इज द मोस्टली फाउंड स्ट्रक्चर इन द इंटीरियर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द प्रोटीन कोलेजन फॉर एग्जांपल आपको पता है आपकी बोन का इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है आपके बहुत सारे स्ट्रक्चरल कार्टिलेज का इंपॉर्टेंट सो आपके स्ट्रक्चरल जो आर्किटेक्चर बना हुआ है उसमें कोलेजन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और कोलेजन में ग्लाइसिन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके और इस कॉलेजन के अंदर आप देखें 30% ऑफ द कॉलेजन कंटेंट इज ग्लाइसिन नाउ यू कैन इमेजिन एवरी थर्ड अमीनो एसिड इज ग्लाइसिन सो एनीथिंग एल्स एनीथिंग एल्स ग्लाइसिन एनीथिंग एल्स एनीथिंग एल्स ग्लाइसिन इतना कॉमन ग्लाइसिन है अबाउट 30 30% ओके नाउ एक बात यहां रह गई करना इट इज अ नॉन एसेंशियल अमीनो एसिड नॉन एसेंशियल का आपको मतलब पता है कि नॉन एसेंशियल आर दोस अमीनो एसिड व्हिच यू कैन एक्चुअली मेक इन योर बॉडी सो यू कैन सिंथेसाइज ग्लाइसिन यू डोंट हैव टू डिपेंड अपॉन ईटिंग ग्लाइसिन इन योर डाइट देखें इतना इंपॉर्टेंट है तो नेचर ने इसके बनने का प्रोसीजर आपके बॉडी के अंदर ही रखा है वरना अगर खाने पे डिपेंडेंट होता है तो आपकी बोन्स भी नहीं बन रहे तो कॉलेजन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड नेचर ने ऐसी चीज जो कि सुपर डुपर इंपॉर्टेंट है उसको डाइट के साथ लिंक नहीं किया यू कैन सिंथेसाइज ग्लाइसिन इट इज सिंथेसाइज फ्रॉम सीरीन मॉलिक्यूल बाई इंजाइम सीरीन हाइड्रोक्सीमिथाइल ट्रांसफेज विच इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन टेट्रोहाइड्रोफॉलेट इज इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर ओके 
Glycine can also be obtained from threonine catalyzed by threonine aldolase. So, two systems you have to remember. Glycine synthase can convert one carbon unit, um, carbon dioxide and ammonia to glycine. So, there are these two enzymatic reactions and then one carbon unit. Three mechanisms which you must remember how glycine is produced in your body. Remember tetrahydrofolate and threonine aldolase, all important. Degradation कैसे होती है? ये बनने का process हो गया, अब ये degrade कैसे होता है? Glycine undergoes oxidative deamination. अब आपको पता है, what is oxidative deamination? Because हमने general concepts of protein metabolism already कर रखा है. इसमें जो enzyme involved है, उसका नाम है glycine synthase and ammonia ion is liberated and carbon dioxide and one carbon fragment. Now this provide a major route for glycine breakdown in mammals, including ourselves. Glycine synthase is a multi enzyme complex and require uh, a lot of things for the activity ye normal hai biochemistry mein a lot of things are required in order to uh, make one enzyme functional this reaction is reversible and therefore glycine can be generated from one carbon unit okay uh, so uh, breakdown of glycine and then uh, regeneration of glycine that's a reversible reaction Glycine is reversibly converted into serine because serine se ye bana bhi tha. if you remember that it is formed by serine so it is also broken down into serine okay pyruvate produced from serine by serine dehydratase serve as a precursor for the glucose so that pathway feeds into so glycine into serine into glucose so therefore glycine is a glucogenic amino acid serine is also degraded to glyox glyoxylate uh, which undergoes transamination to give back glycine and that's why i told you glycine and serine is a reversible reaction okay right what else now um i told you that there are so many important compounds which are produced from glycine that list you know Yaha kuch important baate hain for some of them obviously you don't have to remember the structures but remember just what is produced from glycine okay so purine ring for example very important is produced from glycine you see this is the glycine linear structure that's a cyclical structure glycine glycine is converted into purine ring the entire molecule of glycine is utilized for formation of position 4 and 5 carbon and position 7 of the nitrogen purine so is purine may obviously or be compounds co uh, contribute kar rahe, but glycine key in numbers in carbon numbers pay uh, contribution has so the ones in pink here for example are the ones in pink here from glycine ye wala, ye, 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 sab kahin aur se aye hai, but glycine is being utilized and obviously you don't have to remember ke exactly purine ke structure ka kaun sa carbon number glycine se aya hai, but you should have an idea that glycine can give rise to purine okay then glutathione you know how important this compound is it's a tripeptide and it requires three amino acids for uh, its formation and one of the amino acid is glycine okay and conjugation reaction happen in liver liver ke andar aapke routine liye kaam ho raha hota hai detoxification of drugs hain ya bile acids and bile salts hain glycine performs two important function there number one bile acids cholic acid and chenodeoxycholic acids they are conjugated with so glycine is always available come on conjugate with me i will convert you into something else so for example when cholic acid conjugates with glycine it forms glycocholic acid when chenodeoxycholic acid combines with glycine it forms glycochenodeoxycholic acid so th these are the conjugated compounds and they require glycine Glycine is also an important compound for detoxification by the same token because it combines with a lot of drugs and converts them into something which is then a conjugated compound. So for example, if you look at the example here, benzoic acid, which is also a food preservative. Aap itna sara frozen food khare hote hain ya caned food khare hote hain. Um, Uspe one of the very common preservative is benzoic acid. This benzoic acid in your liver combines with glycine, that's the glycine molecule, and it's converted into hippuric acid. That's routinely happening in your body. Heme is also produced with the help of glycine when it combines with succinyl CoA in the presence of allosynthase, and uh, it also is important for biosynthesis of creatine, which is present in several places in the body, such as muscles, brain, blood. So it requires glycine as well. So I told you. So obviously, all these sort of um, uh, diagrammatic and structural things you don't have to remember, but at least the names you should be able to appreciate. Okay, glycine can be converted uh, from threonine and produced in the body. So that is one reaction, threonine aldolase. So this first line should be clear to you because we talked about it um, here. It is produced from one of the mechanism was to get it uh, done from threonine in the presence of threonine aldolase. And that is what is represented here in equation form. 
okay serine can be also converted into glycine and it is a reversible reaction you see arrows on both the sides then serine you know is uh, also converted into a lot of other things and um, all this we have actually read in the text but that's a diagrammatic representation hota ye hai ki bachche jab diagram is tarah ki dekhte hain to bada confused aur pareshan hote hain kaun ye sab yaad rakhega na har cheez yaad rakhne ki nahi hoti but bigger concept ko chhodna nahi hota that's very important when you are studying medicine okay so creatine ban raha hai ji aapki body mein और फिर वो ऑब्वियसली जब क्रिएटिन बनेगा तो वो अपने फर्दर रिएक्शंस करेगा सच एज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इंजाइम्स या इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रक्चरल कंपोनेंट्स जैसे यहाँ एग्जांपल दी है फॉस्पो क्रिएटिन की विच इज कन्वर्टेड फ्रॉम द क्रिएटिन इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ क्रिएटिन काइंग इज एंड इट इज स्टोर्ड इन द मसल्स एज हाई एनर्जी फॉस्फेट सो ऑब्वियसली ग्लाइसिन नाउ यू कैन हैव एन आइडिया हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट ग्लाइसिन इज फॉर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ लॉर ऑफ अदर थिंग्स Now, creatine and creatinine. The clinical importance be here. The normal concentration of creatine and creatinine in human serum and urine are as follows. Serum may give values and uh, urine may give values. Estimation of serum creatinine is used as a diagnostic test to assess kidney function. Serum creatinine concentration is not influenced by endogenous and exogenous factors, as is the case with the urea. So, urea ka yeh hai ki aap protein zada use karenge, urea zada niklega urine mein. Creatinine ka aisa nahi hai. Uh, it's kind of a fixed concentration which you release out of the body hence some workers consider serum creatinine as more reliable indicator of renal function okay the uh, in fact isse bhi zyada ratios hain spot ratios which are considered more reliable the amount of creatinine excreted is proportional to the total creatine phosphate content of the body aur ab aapko yahan main ye kyun sab baatein bata raha hu because creatine phosphate ban raha hai creatine se aur creatine ban raha hai from glycine तो ये सारी चीजें आपको इस तरह से लिंक्ड हैं दे आर ऑल लिंक टुगेदर इंक्रीज आउटपुट ऑफ क्रियाटिन इन यूरिन इज रेफर टू एस क्रियाटिन यूरिया क्रियाटिन यूरिया इज ऑब्जर्व इन मस्कुलर डिस्ट्रॉफीज फॉर एग्जांपल इन अ लॉट ऑफ अदर डिजीजेस नॉट द टॉपिक है एट द मोमेंट just remember that glycine again if we go back to this diagram what i've been doing is teaching you all this that glycine if you remember this figure you are good for the metabolism of glycine okay it is converted into all these important stuff right so the next thing that i have to talk about is some clinical conditions which are associated with glycine metabolism uh, first one of them being glycine urea it's a rare disorder serum glycine concentration is normal listen to this it is normal uh, ye word sunke aise lagta hai ki kidney se uh, urine mein bahut sara glycine release ho raha hai but this is uh, yeah that is the definition but the normal concentration of serum that's important it's not raised sunke aise lagta hai it will be raised in serum but very high amount of it is excreted in the urine it is believed that glycine urea is due to defect in the renal absorption so kidney usually has to reabsorb it but if there is a problem in the reabsorption it will get out glycine urea is characterized by increased tendency for formation of oxalate renal stones however urinary oxalate level is normal in these patients so here is the catch if you see a patient with increased urinary glycine um, excretion and oxalate stone formation despite glycine being normal and oxalate being normal think about uh, reabsorption problems with glycine another condition is primary hyperoxaluria it's a disorder characterized by increased urinary oxalate resulting in oxalate so increase urinary oxalate and oxalate stones yahan pe normal um, uh, ox urinary oxalate levels the even despite normal levels there were oxalate stones now here so if you have a patient with stones you identify them as oxalate stones you get urinary oxalate levels if normal creatin uh, glycine absorption problem if raised then hyperoxaluria the urinary oxalate is of endogenous origin and not due to dietary consumption of oxalate primary hyperoxaluria is due to a defect in glycine transaminase coupled with impairment of glycoxalate oxidative uh, to form it uh, reaction pathway jahan kahin disturb hota hai uh, wahan you know that this is a very common thing to happen ki things accumulate in the body so uh, that's what exactly happens in the in this pathway as well so if the you know uh, the, here you see that glycine via transamination has uh, some of the metabolites you see oxalates and formates so if there is any problem within the pathway oxalate levels may go up okay it is not known that primary hyperoxaluria is mainly due to defect in the protein targeting defect in the transport of the protein yeah enzyme comes so that's not clear and if they are not clear we are not clear in vitamin b6 deficiency urinary oxalate is elevated which can be corrected by b6 supplementation so they are actually trying to teach you okay if you have a patient with hyperoxaluria there can be different causes there can be primary causes which are associated with enzyme deficiency there can be secondary causes such as b6 deficiency 
and the way to differentiate between them would be gift to the patient B6 and the patient's hyperoxaluria is corrected. If it is not corrected, think about primary hyperoxaluria. Interesting stuff. So that's all about glycine metabolism. Okay, so next we are going to hit on uh, another important topic, phenyl alanine and tyrosine. TKG, both of which are uh, structurally aromatic amino acids and we'll discuss them together. So till then, take care of yourself. My name is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures.